Hey, I'm Derek Kirk of Effectatron and CG Shortcuts. To be honest, this lesson became a little bit bigger than I expected when it started, but the truth is when you download free models or even paid ones, sometimes it's not always as easy as clicking and dragging it in. So in this lesson, we're gonna cover how to convert materials to Redshift in a PBR workflow scenario and controlling metalness values in Redshift, as well as some helpful workflow and troubleshooting tips to get your free models and other models that may have some issues to work for you and look better and actually look the way you want them to. Here's the time code to jump ahead and start the tutorial. I want to mention right now my Skillshare courses that are available. There's a link below to get a free trial. I also have more content in the works. Also, be sure to check out my latest videos here and on CG Shortcuts. Here's a link below to that as well. And lastly, I want to mention my huge course, Redshift Materials Masterclass is available. It's on cgshortcuts.com. Be sure to check that out. Link in the description below. It's over three hours of Redshift training on materials exclusively, and it's got stuff that'll blow your mind. <laughs> okay, so with Christmas right around the corner, I had Christmas movies on the mind, so obviously I thought of Die Hard. So we're going to go through downloading a model gun from Sketchfab and then fixing the materials to work with Redshift. Scott's free M9 is available to download. The link is below as well with all those other links. So let's download that now and extract all these folders. We want to go into the source folder. Inside of that is the FBX, which is the model, and five texture maps. So we can drag and drop our FBX into our scene. It creates a new project. So let's copy and paste that into our scene. So now we can rotate that, put that on the ground. Now this model's not perfectly clean geometry wise, but I'll show you how to fix that up here in a minute. So let's open up the material manager. We have this UV material here. If we render now, we see none of the maps are hooked up and it's not a redshift materials. So let's go up here to redshift materials, tools, convert and replace. That didn't really do a whole lot for us, but it did create a redshift with a diffuse map, even though the map isn't hooked up. So what we're gonna need to do is go in and connect the path to all of our texture files. So in this diffuse tab, let's go ahead and link that to the base color. And now we can see our gun has color. So we know we have four more maps that we need to hook up. So go ahead and drag those maps from the folder into the shader graph. And that's gonna go ahead and create labeled texture nodes for us for each map. Let's do the roughness first. Attach it to the RS material, pick whip this to this little blue bin, and then go to reflection, reflection roughness. Next we see we have a metalness map and we have no metalness attribute by default. So we need to change the Fresnel type in the reflection tab to metalness. Now plug the metalness map into the reflection, reflection metalness. We're gonna come back here and tweak this in a minute once we start wanting to tint our metal. But for now, let's do the bump map. So we have a height and a normal map. Type in bump and bring in three bump nodes and a bump blender because we're gonna to need to mix things together. Then we plug that bump blender into the overall bump input on our RS material. For the height map texture, we're just gonna plug that into the bump and then plug that bump into the base input. Now for the normal map, we're gonna plug that into the bump, set it to tangent space normal, and set its weight to 0.2, and then plug that into bump input zero. Lastly, to give it a bit more of a dramatic bump, I like to take a ramp and plug the normal map into that. And then inside that bump, set it back to height instead of a tangent normal space because now we're using a grayscale map. Set the height scale to 0.2 and plug that into the bump input one. Now in the bump blender, set layer zero's weight to one and layer one's weight to 0.6 and click additive mode. That way we're mixing 100% of our base input plus 100% of that normal map and then 60% of that second height map that we created on top of that. All right, that's looking pretty decent. Now, if you want your gun to be silver, that looks pretty good, but it's a little more silver than I want. I kind of like more of a, a dark gun metal. So we need to alter the diffuse map and also the metalness and reflectivity. So tweaking the color of the metalness driven materials can be tricky. We're gonna wanna create a ramp and plug the diffuse into that. Now plug that into our diffuse color and double click the white knot and change it to 35% gray. Lastly, our handle is looking a little too dark. It's kind of matte. We actually want to drive the metal color with the reflectivity. So for us, we need to tweak our metalness map. So we want to add a ramp, plug the map into that and that into the reflection metalness, set the bottom knot to 88% white. And so this is just going to help create that. This is just going to help add a little bit of that shine back into that handle. So right now it looks okay, but if we go into our RS material and click the reflectivity color attribute, and set it to 12% black, now our handle and our gun are looking a lot better. If, so real quick, if you want to do something like have your material be gold, we could try to change the color of the diffuse to get our metal, but we're not gonna get that good look. So we actually want to adjust the reflectivity color, but when we do that with our current setup, that actually changes the color of our grip and not the color of the metal. So in order to do that, we're gonna need to tweak our metalness map. So we're gonna want to invert either the 
metal map itself or our ramp that we're using. And when we plug that in now and change this to gold, we see now we're getting this nice metallic gold gun with a still have a black grip pistol. So pretty cool. So that's looking pretty good. Not bad for a free model. It has some weird fong breaks and some bad topology here and there. So in order to fix that, normally you can just throw on a sub subsurface divide modifier on there. But what happens is when you throw that on there, it's got smooth applied to it which screws up our UVs and textures. So what we need to do is select everything, control click the faces and then control A to select all the faces and then right click and go to subdivide and do this little gear. Don't click subdivide, click the little gear. Now, if when you click that, nothing happens, it just goes away, that's because your group is selected. So make sure you unselect the top layer group containing everything. Now, right click, go to subdivide, hit that gear. I'm gonna choose Catmull Clark and uncheck smooth. Set the iterations to just two and we'll hit okay. And that's going to clean up a lot of those weird little fong breaks and stuff for us without messing up our UVs. Lastly, one thing Redshift can do to help clean up low poly models and make them look a little bit nicer is called round corners. Go into our gun material, add a round corners node, connect it to the surface so we can see how it's going to affect. Set the radius to 0.08 and the samples to 32 and you see we get this nice thin line around the edge. This is going to fake a smooth bevel. Plug that into bump input 2 and then turn it up to 0.5 for the blend weight. And that adds this nice smooth edge around these sharp edges that were that didn't have any geometry there. So there you go, now you've got this pretty nice looking model. And it's really important to note that when you're working with metals and things, I always like to try different lighting scenarios and different HDR dome light backgrounds and or just setting up different lights because a lot of the way metal things look is very much determined by your environment. So you can be working with something, especially something that's a dark scene and think everything's looking good. And then when you throw it in a scene that's light, you realize your gun's not black. It's actually just super shiny, but it didn't have anything to reflect. So it's important to always kind of double check yourself with the lighting to make sure your material actually looks right in all, in all scenarios. So there we go. A lot to unpack there when you're bringing a model. There's some things you need to change and tweak, but hopefully that I was able to help troubleshoot some issues that maybe you've come across and also how to convert standard things in a PBR workflow that work well with Redshift. I wanted to also include my sort of John Wick lighting that I have here, as well as this cool floor that I created, but this tutorial is already a little longer than I wanted it to be. So let me know in the comments below if that's something you want to see, and maybe I can do that for you as well. Leave a like and subscribe to be sure to check out the links below for more content on Skillshare and my Redshift Materials Masterclass. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Keep the cahier, motherfucker.